large number of banks in Canada went offline for several hours yesterday last night this one is really interesting because it's multiple banks popular banks that went offline in a very short period of time and the same time while we still don't know the actual reason the outage happened for these multiple banks uh, i might have a few theories for this i will jump in and discuss all right this comes from bleeping computer canada's major bank go offline in mysterious hours long outage Five major Canadian banks went offline for hours blocking access to online and mobile banking as well as e-transfer for customer. Notice that all of these are internet services. So this is very important. Nobody mentioned that, hey, if I go to the actual uh, office or the bank teller, can I make a transfer there? I didn't see someone having problem with that. It's only online access, which makes me points to cert certain things on the back end here. Uh, obviously, we're going to speculate. We, we don't really know the reason. The banks reportedly hit by the outage include Royal Bank of Canada, RBC, BMO, Bank of Mont Montreal, uh, Scotia Bank, and the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you are, were one of those customers and got affected by this online banking and e-transfer down for many canada five major went offline yesterday impeding access to e-transfer online and mobile services you can notice that this is the last uh, uh hour the outages we can notice that it started what this is 8 p.m to last last night i'm assuming this is gmt this is gmt time Right, so notice that it's 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 very interesting. So we started seeing some outage here, but it, it blew up immediately, and it's almost at the same time. Right, it's 8 p.m. So these are the different banks. Right, this is slightly after 8 p.m. It's it's as if some central service that all these fair banks uses started experiencing some problems. Right, but that's but this is really odd because I'm not aware of banks sharing central, uh, some central or uh, you know, backbone or system. So I'll be really surprised if that happened, but it could be the case, you know, because the timing here is very interesting 8 p.m., 8 p.m. But you can notice that there is some blips here, even before that, we're noticing certain blips here, 5 p.m., right. It's different, but the, the uh, but but we don't even know. These are the number of outages reported. So these are human. These are a human reports. This right. So there is a friction. There is time reports, and there is the time that you actually import and say, "Hey, I'm having a problem." So these could have could have could have started way before, you know. And this is just it happens that. It's, Everyone just told everyone, hey, I cannot access my system anymore. So what happened? So they started logging at the same time. And this is another thing I might have here. People logging at the same time, everyone checking the system at the same time could have actually exacerbated this problem. So RBC replied, uh, we're currently experiencing technical issues with our online on, and mobile banking as well as our phone systems. Interesting. Our experts are investigating blah blah we don't have an idea right obviously people are angry <laughs> justifiably so but uh this is this is this is what the messages you get hey it's not us it's you let's go through the message and then i'm going to give you my my take here so that's another message tap is transaction this is actually an atm so even atms were down all right so if the atm actually connects to this backbone system then it might actually just went down. But uh, politics aside, there's something that's happening in Canada that's called the Freedom Convoy that might have to do with this, right? Without going into the actual details of this thing, here's, here's a theory of what might cause it. We don't need this article anymore. Let's go back to this phase. So why do systems go down? It's mainly two reasons. There is a recent update that you push on your back end that triggers some bad behavior that goes, your services go down and you are left with few crippling services to serve a large number of customers. 
And as a result, if you get into that situation, then uh, uh, you will basically, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a snowball effect. Those services won't be able to handle. They will go down. You will attempt to auto scale, but you can't possibly scale enough to handle the uh, amount of requests that you just got, right? Because of, of this recent result. Uh, to solve this, you have to do a rolling restart, quickly getting back. Right? You have to stop the service, effectively. You have to stop the flood of requests somehow. Timeouts, uh, circuit breaking, uh, block the clients altogether, but you have to stop the flood. So that's one reason, right? You did something. You actually physically did something to back backend. So that that might, could have happened, but it's it's very unlikely that four banks actually did an update to the backend uh, of their independent services that, cause, that could have caused this. It might be that if the four banks or the five banks actually share a single architecture and single service, I don't know, some somewhere, then this might this problem could happen because all of them are relying on this piece. I really doubt that this piece is so important that it will it will it will cripple the downstream services. That's just a bad backend, if you ask me. You will never you 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 if if your system depending on one central thing you have to assume that this could fail and you have to continue able to serve your clients with a, some sort of a local or queued you know you would queue these requests you would queue these transfer and save them you know in a database locally when i, I mean local i mean in a local database and then you sync it you never synchronously depend on something that is centralized that's just bad architecture in my opinion but let's assume that might not be the case the other reason where things can break is actually if you accidentally got a huge amount of traffic that is unexpected your services are fine but you you were you tuned your scaling to certain workload because you know this is the workload that people use for their a banking systems but what if something happened what if your government announces something that people start to freak out and everyone in canada at the same time within a small window of time they start making thousands upon thousands upon thousands of transfer at the same time this will put a lot of unexpected load on your back end and we can get into the snowball effect that we talked about the moment you uh, these requests start to time out eventually one server goes down then you're gonna get a lot of requests that these servers can handle this so these servers start to go down all time out and then then you're gonna get into a situation where you don't have any any healthy servers we talked about how envoy proxy actually solved this with the panic mode where say hey even if i'm not healthy continue sending requests to me Th that all depends on the reverse proxy configuration this is like a little bit of an into with in the weed but we can go into it in another episode but that could happen and when i thought about that uh, the prime minister justin trudeau actually announced uh, based on this freedom convoy that they he gave permission to the banks to freeze people's account so that would explain a flux of requests that are completely unexpected from people people are freaking out they will all go online at the same time and you will be surprised that that you might say hussein oh, of course everyone is online all the time no if you get an actual flux at the same concurrently you will be amazed how much uh how much of the backend you actually bring down it depends how badly written your client if your client app is badly written so that it sends a lot of an unnecessary request those unnecessary requests will just pile up and pile up and pile up and will become really really bad and could, could, could kill your backend effectively so that's very that could 
be the problem that actually happened here. W one small thing to add here, actually, we've seen these kind of outages, the burst of requests coming at the same time well, when the pandemic starts, when when everyone started working from home using a VPN, we've seen Microsoft, we've seen Microsoft, Facebook, Google experience some sort of an outages because of this amount, the crazy amount of load that happened due to the pandemic. And uh, you, that's why we see uh, a little bit of a time gap between where the banks uh, uh, experience this uh, outage, right? I don't know, guys. This is just again. We're just speculating here. I'm not sure if this is this could be this this could be it or not. Um, just speculating here. Uh, what do you guys say? Were you affected by this? Uh, here in America, we didn't have our banks continue working. I think I didn't access my bank today. But uh, yeah, uh, let me know what do you guys think. Do you have any other theories? Uh, I'd love to read them in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.